Next we're going to be talking about electric fields and I'll start by talking about Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was a British scientist in the 1800s and he was one of the people who gave us a useful and intuitive description of electric fields. A lot of scientists claimed that they were able to understand electric fields because of Faraday's explanations and he had, he had a lot of significant breakthrough discoveries and he's also got a good story so I'll tell you a little bit about his life. He grew up in a very poor family in London and was largely uneducated. He apparently had a speech impediment and couldn't pronounce his R's properly when he was young. He would pronounce his R's as W's. And so his brother Robert, for example, he would call him Wobbert. And there's a story that um, when he was, I think it was fourth grade, was um, in school and he had said his, his brother's name incorrectly and it frustrated his teacher. And his teacher had been getting very frustrated with this for a long time. And um, Michael couldn't pronounce, pronounce his R's correctly. And when he, um, when he mispronounced it, I guess, one too many times, and the teacher got so frustrated, he decided he was going to beat him. And he sent his brother, Robert, out to get a stick, to go outside and get a stick to come back to punish Michael with. And, um, and M Michael's brother, Robert, was all scared. You know, the teacher's going to beat my brother. And so instead of going and, and getting a stick, he ran home and told his mom, and mom, of course, was very upset and went down and took them both out of school. And that was it for their education. In the middle of fourth grade, they were done with schooling. And so he, he grew up w with little or no formal education at all. And, um, and as was typically the case then, if you weren't going to be educated, you still needed to have a job of some kind. And so you would learn a trade. And for example, if you wanted to learn to make shoes, you would be an apprentice to the local shoemaker, and then eventually you would have your own job as a shoemaker, uh, learning the trade from the master. And um, Faraday got a job as an apprentice to a bookbinder, and Faraday was very intelligent. And in his his job at the bookbindery, he was exposed to a lot of books and was able to read books on science and books on chemistry, and w was able to educate himself a, a good bit. Was able to compensate for the fact that he didn't have much training in school. And he had, um, had a very bad relationship with his master, the, um, the guy who was in charge of the book bindery. Didn't enjoy the, the, the job, didn't enjoy working for him, and wanted to do something else. And the Royal Society was in existence at the time, the prestigious organization of scientists in London. And they would give public lectures once a week where a scientist would stand up and anyone could come and they would give a lecture on some current scientific theories and the the chemist Davy Sir Humphrey Davy was delivering some lectures on chemistry and Faraday went and took copious notes and hundreds of pages of notes and went back to the book bindery and bound them up in a nice volume and presented them to Sir Humphrey Davy as a gift and asked him for a job and Davy was very impressed and offered him a job at the Royal Society doing some very meaning, menial work so but uh, Faraday still considered that better than working in the book bindery and so he took a job and um, here he is in the in the lab he um, very quickly showed some aptitude he was making comments on the scientific experiments and suggesting to people ways to improve them. And he was eventually given some space to do experiments of his own and was first working mainly with chemistry, uh, doing experiments in chemistry, later moved into physics, dealing with electricity and magnetism, where most of his major breakthroughs came. And this picture is actually a watercolor painting uh, done by a lady who documented much of Faraday's life in watercolors. And here's another picture of Faraday in his younger years. Faraday ended up accompanying Davy on a lecture tour of Europe, which was just a phenomenal opportunity for Faraday. This was um, the poor boy from London who had no education and no money, and now here he was on the scientific lecture tour of Europe, and he was able to get exposed to a lot of important thinkers and a lot of important ideas on that trip. And he, he came back and he continued his scientific experiments. And he was known as a great experimenter. Even though he didn't have much education and as a result knew very little mathematics, he had an intuitive grasp of the concepts, especially with the electricity and magnetism, and was, would understand what was going on with the flow of the current and the charge, and was able to do experiments that were meaningful and instructive and, and was just very fruitful in his research. This is one very famous experiment he did. This is uh, the, the first electric motor. And it certainly doesn't look like a motor, but electric current would flow through this wire. 
and through this mercury and down and back out and the magnetic field generated would cause the wire to rotate around this magnet and so there was this forced rotation due to the flow of electric current and the interaction between the magnetic field produced by the current and the magnetic field produced by the magnet so this was the first electric motor and he also demonstrated that a magnet moving through a coil of wire would produce some current in the coil and these were very big breakthroughs very foundational ideas in the study of electromagnetism and this is a picture of Faraday when he was older. Um, he was known as someone who lived a sacrificial life for the sake of science. Several times he turned down much more profitable job offers in order to continue his research at the Royal Society. He could have made as much as 50 times what he was making at the Royal, at the Royal Society, but chose to continue to work in the lab. And he even worked amidst some serious criticism. The Queen of England once ridiculed his work on radio waves saying that they weren't any use and that he was wasting his time experimenting with such things. And at one point, um, I, I, it was either the, the queen or another politician who asked him what use would ever become of, of this work. And his, um, his response was, one day, sir, you will be able to tax it. And so he gave a, a response that would, that would appeal to a politician kind of clever response there. He was also a very devout Christian and that was uh, typically the case with a lot of these early scientists. They were, they were believers in God and in a God who ordered the universe in a rational way and so when they went to study the world they expected to find rationality and order in the world. And he was also known as being a very humble person and didn't forget his humble beginnings. And there's a story that toward the end of his life he was working late in the lab one day when a, a new scientist, a young guy who had just come on board with the Royal Society came in and didn't recognize him and Faraday was in there cleaning the lab and the, the, the new scientist asked him so, so who are you, some kind of janitor here? And Faraday just said yes I'm the janitor and continued cleaning the lab. So he was known as a very humble guy as well as a very brilliant thinker. And it's to him that we owe our understanding of some of the main ideas of electricity and magnetism and our understanding of electric fields which we will be talking about in the next lecture.